Years ago, I moved to Paris. If any of you ever knew someone actually living there, you know that it's so hard to find a flat. I had a great job with a good salary as for my age, mid twenties, and I was looking for whatever flat, just a little studio, nothing fancy. I kept being rejected by landlords for plenty of reasons, because I'm new there, because I'm on probation at work, like every person in France, because I'm from Eastern Europe, and this is bad for some of the people, etc. I was basically homeless, living on a couch of amazing people that I've just met. The amount of flats that I've been rejected from was around 20 at that time. I had one more flat to see, but I had zero hopes for this one, as it was much better than the usual flats I was visiting. I was in a terrible state. My mom was so worried. It took two months to find a flat. It was a horrible time for me and my family, as I was literally homeless and had no prospects, despite having agencies paid by my company and a good salary. Anna has known me since my childhood years. She was my mom's best friend. She helped my mom get separated from my abusive dad. She was taking care of me often, and she was always very, very supportive of me. She kept telling me that I'll achieve great things, and that I'm amazing, and she wished for all the best for me. Overall, really warm and caring person. I always liked her, and felt like she genuinely cared about me. Then I grew up, moved out to another city in my home country, and she got cancer. I didn't see her for a long time. It was horrible to see it for my mom, as Anna was always an extremely healthy person. She ate well, was doing a lot of sports, but she used to smoke when she was young and it came for her. She passed away. I didn't attend the funeral as I was far away and I had exams and I were ways parted years before. Back to Paris. I fell asleep when I had a dream. I was talking to Anna. She asked me, how was my mom? How am I doing? Afterwards, she told me that she's proud of me achieving my dreams and goals, getting a career in Paris, having a good life, and being a hard-working person. She said that she's with me, and she knows I'll live a great life. I woke up, called my mom, and I said, Mom, you won't believe I had a dream about Anna. That was so nice and heartwarming. My mom was silent for a few seconds and said, Do you know it's the anniversary of her death today? I didn't know. There was no possibility I knew. I didn't attend the funeral. I didn't know the date. It was a few years ago. I just didn't. I started crying because that felt so odd. And so did my mom. A few days after I got this flat, it seemed impossible to get as it was much bigger, newer, and nicer than all the flats I'd seen before, yet I kept being rejected. I really believe it's her that somehow helped. Since then, I feel like I've had a guardian angel with me. Now I'm on holiday in my hometown, and I decided to bring a candle to a grave, as in my culture, it's a way to honor the dead. Starting off, I grew up a hardcore atheist, a non-believer in the paranormal. Even the thought of ET life forms with technology capable of light speed travel seemed far-fetched and improbable. God seemed impossible. And if God did exist, according to scripture, I felt like he was a being a God without morals. Around 2017, I became more of an agnostic who shattered his ideals of absolution, but still needed evidence for proof. I don't claim to know what could or could not be out there anymore. All I know is that the possibility remains. My father lives off Highway 44 between St. James and Cuba, Missouri. For several years now, he's had strange events and sightings at his house and in his area. Going back to 2018, when I first felt off, me, my father and my brother were all out of the pole barn late at night, roughly 10pm, doing work on my father's truck. We normally have some type of firearm nearby when outside. As I was smoking a cigarette outside of the pole barn, I felt really uneasy. Nothing had happened out of the ordinary, but I felt like I was being watched with someone having a scope on my forehead. The neighbours live about a quarter of a mile down the road on one side of my father's house, and on the other side is an open field. In front of the house is the road with the woods on the other side of the road, and behind the house is about four acres of land, stretching all in a square that's mostly open, with scattered trees and the forest being the edge of the property. I felt like the threat was coming from the woods from being behind the house. I told my father and my brother that they felt fine. He told me if I felt off to shoot several slugs in that direction. So 
I shot three slugs off into the woods. I didn't hear anything move from being frightened, but the feeling first persisted for about another ten minutes or so. I figured I was psyching myself out and didn't think much of the situation much more. This happened in late summer, early fall, I believe. Nearly a year later in mid-July, I went back down there. This time, my father instructed me to listen for a sound. It was nearly inaudible. It sounded like a heartbeat coming from the floor of his house. It was only impossible to hear it if everything was dead silent and your head was near the floor. Nothing shook, but the sound was so consistent that it persisted at all times of the day and for over several months. I'd asked him if it was still happening when I left and he would always tell me yeah, until about October I believe. Odd to say the least, but it never made me feel unsafe. However, in September, I went down there for a weekend and had one of the scariest encounters of my life. I felt like a small child who wanted to cry for help. My father, my brother, their dog and my cousin all went to town. So instead of sleeping on the couch, I went to sleep in my father's room. It was roughly 8 to 10 a.m. when I went to sleep on this king-sized memory foam mattress. I don't know how much time had passed when I fell back to sleep, but I was suddenly woken from my slumber when I felt the bed move slightly. I figured the dog had jumped up, but I was so tired I didn't even open my eyes. Seconds later, the bed violently raised and slammed up and down for what seemed to be about 10 to 30 seconds. Scared out of my mind, I was paralyzed still. I didn't hear anything other than the bed slamming and the box fan being swept across the floor. As soon as it stopped, I opened my eyes and looked around the small room. There was the closet near the door that was closed and the door that was cracked open, which is not unusual. Afraid to move for nearly 20 to 40 minutes, I just sat there, hoping nothing was in the closet. I grabbed the shotgun near the bed and opened up the closet and it was empty. I then checked the rest of the house. Some open windows with the screen still in and both doors leading outside, bolted locked. I proceeded to look up if an earthquake happened and for the next two days, I didn't see anything as reported. I coughed it up to me having a seizure, which I had when I was younger, but even that idea didn't make sense because the box fan had been moved nearly five feet and was on the floor face down. My family returned after this incident about two hours later and I kept silent because I forced myself to believe it was a seizure. Nearly two years later, 2021, is when the unexplained phenomenon starts to happen on almost a weekly basis. My brother moved out, so the only two people who noticed it were me when I was down there and my father. He started off the conversation when I arrived there one Friday night with, I'm not on drugs, but I need your eye to tell me if I'm going insane. Since I was more open-minded at this time, I agreed to listen and look at what he wanted to show me. It was nearly 11pm and he instructed me towards his room and shut off his lights. What I saw was a silhouette humanoid figure that would almost leave traces of itself as it would walk between two different trees in the backyard. From point A to point B, however, at point B, the figure would basically teleport back to point A and repeat the cycle. It also happened in my brother's room, except the figure would seemingly disappear and reappear behind multiple different trees, but still in a pattern. I honestly thought my father's eyes and my eyes were playing tricks on us, and I was feeding off his delusions. Until I saw a light flashing in the woods. It looked yellowish-orange, but it flickered three times right at the house in three-second intervals that would slowly fade down. He didn't see it at the time, nor did he tell me about it. But when I told him what I had just seen, it was as if I had just confirmed his fears. He said he had also seen lights in the same area of the woods. We both covered our windows that night with blackout sheets and slept with a fire on next to our bed. I would also hear almost like stomping sounds in the attic late at night, almost any time I was laid down there for a two or three day period, at least once. Too scared to check, we just ignored it. I've also seen rusted metal illuminate green, which is highly odd. As for the first time I saw the shadows before I convinced myself they were real, I coughed it up to multiple ideas as to what was causing them. Maybe it was the moon and the clouds. Nope, it was a new moon and there wasn't a single cloud in the sky. Maybe it was something like a bird, bat or bug flying around the pole lights. Pole lights don't reach the edge of the woods and the silhouette was so dark it was as if some mass had to be right there. 
These are all my first-hand accounts. This past winter, January or February 2022, my father heard knocking on his window around 5 or 6 a.m. Pissed someone was trying to break in, he went outside with his shotgun and his dog. When inspecting the side of the house, he claims he was pushed or thrown five or six feet backwards, spraining his hands. He grabbed the dog, got in his car, left his gun and left for another relative's house for a day. His hand was severely swollen and he was having trouble lifting just a cup of water. Returning to his house the next day, he saw his imprint on the snow. He was thrown forwards and no tracks other than his were visible. The gun was right there where he fell. While he was hunting in the winter, he saw in his tree stand. As he was sitting there in the blistering cold with snow all around him, he heard snow crunching as if something was stepping there. When he looked down, he saw no tracks and no sign of any creatures. He was paralysed with fear like I was, because he swore he saw something almost identical to the predator. Some nights he claims his woods will illuminate even though it's a new moon. Other nights his motion sensor floodlights will turn off and on even though there's nothing out there. At some point, the floodlights just stay on and don't go off for hours. The man who owns the open field next to my father's house had three cattle mutilated in a two-day span. Their throats cut with a precision-like tool. The cattle are friendly if you're on the outside of the fence. I've fed them apples and veggies before. However, crossing the fence, the cattle will chase you out. Knowing the owner, he gave my father permission to check on the property from time to time, but the cows continuously chased him out. Not sure how someone or something could stop them from getting chased out and perform precision-like cuts, killing the animals. I do not know if any of the organs were missing, however, from what I heard, it looked like they were just needlessly killed. When they asked my father if he noticed anything strange, he denied all claims. He doesn't want to sound like a nut job or have people thinking he's a drug addict, hallucinating. Down the street about 10 miles is another couple who owns chickens. They're down to earth and I've hung out with them several times. They're older in the late 50s and in August something killed their chickens in the locked coop, taking only the heads. Putting the chicken corpses in a circle inside the coop, all without breaking or removing it from what we've seen. Another individual claims to have heard the odd howling and screeching too. And something with the weight of a human or more landed on his trailer. He said he looked out his window looking for anything strange and when he got near he saw some time with a 15 to 20 foot wingspan take off. I honestly don't know what to think about all this. Other than my own accounts, typically I don't believe much other than the facts. However, all these strange occurrences can't be a coincidence. It was about 1am or so, and I woke up to get a drink and go to the toilet, and all the normal stuff. When as I was in the kitchen, I heard my roommate call my name. Not loudly, but enough that I could hear it. Strangest thing though, was that it was from the opposite side of the house. The rooms in this house are down a hallway, and the kitchen was on the other side of the house, near the front door. I heard her calling my name from the front doorway area, where she was sleeping was down the hallway. The other thing was it sounded so wrong. The pitch of her voice was a bit higher at the end of my name and it sounded just wrongly timed, like she said the start faster. Anyway, I walk over to the hallway and I call out, yeah, but no response. I say it again for good measure, but again no response, and I shake it off as sleep talking, even though I've never heard them sleep talk before. All of this ignoring the fact that the sound came from the wrong side of the house, which is what freaked me out the most. Anyway, I ended up opening the front door and standing outside, around where I heard the voice. Dumb decision in retrospect, but 1am me isn't known for thinking things through exactly. So as I'm standing outside, I hear a woman scream from further down the street. Now I live on the outskirts of a city, and it's a Sunday, so this is pretty common to hear people partying and stuff. But this sounded wrong too. It sounded far away, but it had no echo. It also sounded like the voice had no volume, like it was played out of a speaker or something. Not like quiet, but like it had no depth or something. Sure enough, I was scared after that combination of events, enough that I went back to my room to try and sleep again. In the morning, I asked my roommates if they said or heard anything, and they said they had no idea of anything. 
but them being super into paranormal things try to tell me about skinwalkers, which I've looked into a bit since then. But it all seems a bit far-fetched. Like, it's a lot to try and believe, when before this I've never had any unexplainable experiences. I was peacefully asleep, dreaming of fluffy kittens and flying with ravens, and I felt something flick my nose. This was strange, because I always sleep with the blanket pulled up over my head. The blanket wasn't moving, which was odd, but I brushed it off as a weird dream. As I was about to close my eyes, the blood in my ears roared so loud, I could barely hear anything else, and my heartbeat was unnaturally fast and just as loud as the roaring. I could feel every blood vessel in my body. The feeling was like they were firm balloons, and my head swam as I sensed something standing in front of me. Adrenaline and fear flew through my system like a riderless skateboard flying down a steep ramp. But I didn't move. I didn't scream. I didn't breathe. I couldn't. Even thinking was like swimming through thick syrup. It was as if I had been hit by a train of... something I can only describe as pure energy. As it slowly dawned on me that I may not live to see another day, I heard my mother's voice calling me. Something told me it wasn't her. It didn't have any warmth to it, and it was weird for her to call me before she knew I was awake. So I stayed still and silent, the blood still roaring, and my heart going so fast, I thought it might explode. I heard the being shift and step on a crinkly candy wrapper. Then, I sensed it slowly reaching out a limb, as if it were going to grab my foot. I must have decided against it, because I'm still here, writing this. But it kept its arm outstretched, its stature frozen completely, as if it were mimicking my unmoving state. By now, the roaring had stopped, but I still sensed the being there, so I didn't move. I slowly reached for the pocket knife I had clipped to my pants. Thank goodness, I had forgotten to unclip it and put it away, because although it was small, it was very, very sharp. I flipped it open and slowly reached for the end of my blanket. I ripped it off and slashed the air with the ferocity of a tiger. There was nothing there. So a couple of months ago, I don't know what time it was at night, but I'm sure it was late. This Betty Boop snow globe that plays music when wound up from the bottom, that my mum has had for years now, began playing. I remember hearing it in my sleep and wrote it off as part of my dream, but it got louder and louder. I then sat up and through the fog of my sleep, got up and walked towards the sound. I had completely forgotten about the damn thing and was confused as to why I was hearing it. So I picked it up and tried to grab onto the lever to wind it up to stop it. But for some reason, the lever just kept pushing past the force of my hand. I remember being a kid and being able to easily stop it with my fingers. So I tried pushing the lever forward to get to the end of the song faster, but the song kept playing at a steady pace. I remember trying to unwind it for several minutes, but nothing. I realised how loud this thing was, so I grabbed a blanket and wrapped it around the globe to muffle the noise. I go back to my bed and sit back with it in my arms. I shut my eyes listening to what seemed like this never-ending melody. I don't know how much time passed, but it finally stopped. I went to put it back and then laid back down. I refused to lose sleep over this. I closed my eyes and waited for sleep to take me again. A little bit of time passed by and I still hadn't fallen asleep. Then I began to hear this thumping sound, like drums. They had a short delay between thumps, and with each thud they got louder and louder. But not like loud in volume, loud in what felt like anxiety. With each thump I started feeling a little more panicked. And then, something told me to open my eyes. This pulling feeling opened my eyes and I opened them. The drums got a little quieter but were still there. My eyes darted around my room, and as they scanned over every tiny thing, even over the globe again, I saw it. Something standing in my doorway, peering at me. I want to describe it, but it's hard to remember it. It was this completely dark figure with a set of eyes that glowed. 
I remember staring at it for a while before shutting my eyes and starting to pray. Then, suddenly, I fell asleep and I woke up to the daylight breaking through my windows. I didn't mention anything to my family, but now I feel like sharing my experience here for maybe an answer. The first one I have to share is the most recent one. And I have to give a trigger warning for this one, since I will talk about panic attacks. And I know just hearing about the symptoms can cause them to, you know, kick in. Anyway, this happened two summers ago, as I was celebrating Midsummer's Eve with my boyfriend, his family and their neighbors. We were having a lovely time, but I st still not really myself because of something that happened a few days earlier. I essentially had PTSD. For me to celebrate this holiday with them wasn't actually planned, but because of this thing that happened, I ended up traveling to his house the night before because I knew I'd feel safe there. The other people there knew what had happened, but didn't really understand just how much it had affected me mentally. I don't think I understood it myself, to be honest. Long story short, they talked and asked a lot more about it than I was comfortable with. And of course, I would feel like panic attack brewing. I excused myself and hurried into the house, since the party was going on in the garden. I made it inside and collapsed on the floor, hyperventilating, shaking, the good stuff. Let's pretend my name is Nim. From behind me, I heard someone say, It's alright, Nim. It's gonna be okay. You're okay, Nim. You know, calming, encouraging stuff. But I hate when people see me like that. So I scrambled up from the floor and hurried further into the house to be alone. I finally calmed down and went and sat down on the sofa and my boyfriend soon joined me since he was starting to suspect something was up. He told me the guests had now left and I said that I still wish they hadn't seen me like that. He said that he didn't think they'd noticed. He hadn't even noticed at first. He just thought I went in to fetch something. I then told him that someone had been standing behind me trying to comfort me. He then just looked at me with concern for a few seconds before saying, Nim, we were all still outside. No one followed you into the house. You were alone in there. I could just feel the blood drain from my face. It sounds cheesy, but this time I actually felt it. It was only then that I realized that I couldn't place the voice I had heard. I just felt it sounded familiar, but I didn't actually know whose voice it was. Often when I'm having panic attacks, I can almost feel myself splitting in two. One part who is having the panic attack, and the one part who isn't. The second part is always making sure I stay safe, tries to remind me to steady my breath, catch myself if I lose my footing, etc. But it's still always the same conscience. I always experience both at the same time. This is the first time one of the parts were actually talking to the other, and I was freaking out too much to realize it was my own voice I was hearing. So yeah, that was a story that I feel has a reasonable explanation, but it still creeps me out a bit. At the same time, it's quite comforting to know that I am looking out for myself. Story two. This happened five or six years ago, so when I was around 22 years old. I was walking my family old dog, and I suddenly saw something flashing above us. We were in quite a central part of a decently large city, so I just imagined that someone in an apartment above us must have lit a very bright lamp, and I instinctively looked up. The sky was bright blue, and a bright light like lightning was running across it. Maybe not too strange, you might think. If it hadn't been for the fact that it was at the end of March, late in the evening, and the sky had been pitch black moments before. But now, the sky is bright, and everything is lit up like daytime. I just stare at it in awe for a moment, blink, and the sky is black again. Everything is back to normal, as if the universe had just glitched for a moment, as if God had accidentally hit the wrong switch and was like, oh shit, before turning it off again. I just look up in confusion for a bit. Did I imagine it? It happened so quickly that I really hadn't processed it before it was over, so maybe I did imagine it. I look down at my dog trying to see if he seemed confused as well. Hmm, maybe a little. But that might just be because he sensed I was. He was a very empathic dog after all. I finally decided that I was probably very tired and just needed some sleep. 
We went home, but of course, I didn't go to bed. I wasn't even that tired. I was by now 95% sure I had been imagining it, but those remaining 5% really had me by the tits and wouldn't let me go. I finally relented and started Googling. Turns out a bunch of people in my city and some of the cities close by had had the same experience that night. Blue sky, bright light. Some people had even heard explosions. My brain was heading terribly close to alien invasion mode before I finally reached an article where a scientist had spoken out. What we had all seen was a bolide. A bolide is apparently an exceptionally bright meteor. This particular bolide had been strong enough to light up the sky, almost as brightly as the fucking sun. The flashes I saw before I looked up was probably when it actually passed over me. I guess I looked up at the end of it and the lightning I saw was probably its tail. And as soon as it passed, everything went back to normal. So even this crazy glitch in the Matrix story had a perfectly logical explanation, which definitely gives a different perspective on what other unbelievable stories I hear. The answer might be so much simpler than we think. Story three, unless. This is the earliest of the bunch. It happened when I was 12 or so, and I was visiting our holiday home with my family. I can't remember where we had been or what we'd been doing, but I'm guessing we'd been swimming in the ocean. In either case, we were now heading back home. In the first story, I was experiencing PTSD and a panic attack. In the second, me and my dog were alone at night in the dark. Both pretty creepy circumstances, right? This time, it was daytime, around lunch or afternoon. Bright, warm, and sunny. The least horror story-esque most people can imagine. If there was one moment my child brain was not expecting to see something creepy, it was right then. We were practically home, just walking past the last yard before ours. I happened to look into their yard and froze, causing my parents to carry on without me. Someone stood in their yard. They looked at least somewhat ordinary in almost every way. The height of an average male, if I remember correctly. Walked upright, two arms, two legs, you know. He was dressed either in actual rags or in very tattered clothing. I can't quite remember his hair though. It was quite unusual. I remember it kind of like tentacles, kind of like the alien from the Predator movies. It might just simply have been dreadlocks though. He was standing some 30 meters away and it was hard to tell. And my 12 year old self wasn't exactly used to people with dreadlocks. Either way, nothing about his appearance was necessarily that unusual so far, if the hair was actually just dreadlocks. But his face. When he realised that I looked at him, he froze too and looked back up at me. His skin was grey. Not greyish. Sickly pale, I'm going to throw up grey. But concrete, ash, clay, you got it. Grey. And wrinkly. Not like a very old person, but with a few big, deep wrinkles, like a wrinkly dog, like a sharp hay or something. To the point that completely warped his facial features and almost hid his eyes. I just stared at him in shock for a few moments and he stared back at me. Honestly, kind of with the same expression. Suddenly, he seemed to snap out of it, however, and hurried away across the yard and disappeared behind their house. At which point, I snapped out of it as well and hurried to catch up with my parents. Later the same day, in the early evening, when the sun had just started to set, I stepped out of the house. Can't remember why. I was just about to head down the stairs and into our yard, when I felt myself freeze again. There he was, in our neighbour's yard again, fucking waiting for me. He was roughly the same distance from me as the previous time. This time, he didn't look shocked, but stern and somewhat puzzled. This time, it was I who copied his expression and we just looked at each other for a while. Finally, he seemed to have had enough and he turned around and hurried back behind the house again, disappearing behind the same corner as before. And I woke up from my trance-like state once again. I can't remember what I did after this, what I thought, how I behaved, what happened. I've asked my mother about this and apparently I told my parents about what happened and I seemed quite shaken. This was around 16 years ago, and I've been back there many times. I never saw him again, 
And I've never heard anyone mention any similar experiences in that area, or anywhere, to be honest. I don't know what to think of this or what to feel. It could have been imagination, because boy, do I have that. But even at a really young age, I could always tell reality and imagination apart. I simply liked making up stories. Also, it was quite sunny and warm, so sunstroke has been a plausible theory for me. Another theory is that it simply was a dude in a mask and face paint, but I wasn't alone the first time. My parents had walked right in front of me. There were other people walking back and forth on the road, to or from the water. Whatever he was, he clearly stood out, and he stood close to the road on an open lawn. Someone else should have seen him, yet no one did, so that theory doesn't really sit well with me either. The final theory that I have is that whatever I saw was paranormal. Even if that would be the case, and this might sound strange, I'm not afraid of him. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. I saw no trace of him, no trace of malice. The way he looked at me, much like I looked at him. The first time, he seemed honestly surprised I could see him. The second time, he seemed to want to decide if I was a threat or not. I suppose I felt the same, and we both seemed to settle or not. We seemed to come to a mutual understanding to stay out of each other's ways. I'm completely open to it having a logical explanation, and just as open to it not having that. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. When the world feels boring and mapped out, I just remember this experience, and I'm reminded that there are still mysteries out there. Judging by the way he looked at me, I might even be somebody else's mystery. There's an episode of my childhood that always makes me wonder about my existence. It's quite strange. I was like seven or eight, living in a small village with my family. The village is so small that everybody knows about everybody. Being a small village, there's only a small river that's near a source of water to wash the clothes or dishes, like each person goes to this water body daily. My mum also went there to wash clothes, and I also went there along with my mother usually. One day, like any other day, I was there with my mom, and there were kids there. I was talking to a girl and boy of quite the same age, and I was telling them I could easily jump into water, even though it was deep. But I know I can't swim, but they don't know, and I just jumped into the water and drowned. I was so confused and couldn't process anything, but I was thinking why nobody was there to help me. It was so weird being water for the first time that I couldn't even scream. After some time, I was walking down the street and didn't know how I got out of the water or who saved me. I don't know why I was walking. There was a boy from my village who touched my shoulder and told me that my mum was calling me. Before that point, I don't even remember how I got out of the water and why I was walking. I don't even remember the walk. I don't remember anything like that memory is just not there. I only remember that boy telling me about mum and I was waking physically conscious. My clothes weren't even wet, but I don't remember anything after I drowned. To this day, I don't know what happened because if somebody had saved me, then everybody would have known, but nobody did. I sometimes think it might be a dream, but I know it wasn't. It never felt like that because I remember jumping in the water. Sometimes you tell yourself it's just your mind playing tricks, but I know it was real. I always question myself about it whenever I'm thinking about it. My fiancé and I moved into a new apartment four months ago. Everything seemed great at first, twice the size of our old apartment in a very nice community. About a month after moving in though, I had my first experience. I'll go ahead and say now that none of this ever happens when my fiancé is home. The first experience I had was early in the morning. My fiancé had gone to work and I was just walking up to do the same. I heard the door to his office open so I checked his location figuring he just overslept and not wanting to freak out prematurely. His location shows he was at work. Then I heard what sounded like someone shuffling across our carpet. Then the guest bed bathroom door opened. At this point, I armed myself with a pocket knife and locked myself in the closet. The closet has a connecting wall to the bathroom. I called my fiancé to come home, and while I was on the phone, I swear to God I heard a muffled feminine voice like someone pressing their face against the wall, muttering, 
hey, hey, in a tone that almost sounded comforting. Now I'm panicking, more shuffling. Then I hear my fiancé come in. He checked the whole apartment, and the only things out of place were his office door was open, and a childhood picture of him had been overturned in the living room. I chalked up to the paranoia. The following night, I had a nightmare. I was laying in bed, and that same voice was urgently whispering, He's coming, over and over, while someone was banging down my door. This happened three consecutive nights in a row, and all was quiet for about a month after that. The next event happened, again, when I was alone. I was cooking in the kitchen and kept getting this eerie feeling that someone was right behind me. I put a bowl of crushed up Oreos on the counter and turned away, only to turn back and see them on the floor. Looking up, I swear I saw a shadow turn the corner of the living room. By this point, I was solidly convinced my apartment was haunted. And my fiancé insisted it wasn't. Things kept happening, but they were minuscule. Things not where I left them, soft knocks at night... Eerie feelings of being watched. The one thing that stayed consistent is that almost every time something got misplaced, that same picture of my fiancé would be overturned. That is, until tonight. I was home alone again. My cat and I were sitting on the couch while the baby kitty knocked with his toy in the cat corner. Then, out of nowhere, three big deliberate knock-knock-knocks came from the door downstairs. It was more like a banging. At first, I thought something fell. Checking the house, everything was in place. I've grown fairly used to creepy things happening. So I tried to ignore it, even though for whatever reason, it felt more sinister tonight. Well, about an hour later, my light flickered. All of the power did. Okay, power surge, but then it happened again, and again. And suddenly the lights were flickering like strobe lights, and there was another series of knock, knock, knock. I'm now sitting in my car, waiting for my fiancé to get home. Am I scaring myself? Does anyone know what kind of paranormal activity this could be? If any? When I was younger, 18 to 24 years old, I worked at my family's trucking company. It was a small operation with around 17 trucks. I did DOT compliance and log auditing. One Friday, as I was preparing to go home, I was informed that they had decided to open a warehouse as well, and I'd be responsible for setting it up and the daily operations. They handed me a set of keys for the building and an address to report to on Monday. Guessing being the youngest member of the family working there meant I was the first one to get moved around to other jobs. So Monday comes, and I show up at the building at 8am. It was an old metal manufacturing building that was built in the 60s. The company that originally built it and occupied the building closed years ago, and the new owner had divided the building into 50 foot wide by 200 foot long sections that each had a front door, rear door with steps, dock door and plate, and two small bathrooms built in the front left corner of the unit. After we had been open for a couple of weeks, they built a small office in the right corner of our unit, so I could have space to set up a computer for inventory control and invoicing. As this was a small warehouse operation, I was the only employee. When we needed something shipped out of one of our customers, they would send our local delivery driver over with a tractor trailer to deliver the product. At first, everything was normal. I would show up and wait for orders to come in, and then pull the pallets and let dispatch know that I needed the driver to bring the tractor trailer and make a delivery. It was pretty boring, as I was the only one there. One day, after we had been open for about six months, I was rotating pallets in the aisle, and as I backed out of an aisle with the forklift, I saw an old man out of the corner of my eye. As I was supposed to be the only person in the warehouse, and I was certain all the doors were locked, I turned to cuss out whoever was standing there, but when I turned, there was nobody there. I chalked up to my imagination and went on about my business. It was probably two weeks before I saw the old man again. I was getting pallets pulled for an order, and as I was backing out of the aisle, I saw him again out of the corner of my eye. He would just be standing there in blue jean overalls and a red button-down flannel shirt. When I would turn to look at him, he would be gone. This happened off and on for about a year, when I was told I was moving back to the main office, and they were hiring someone else to run the warehouse. I worked the main building for about one year after that, 
and they decided they wanted to expand the warehouse by getting the section next to ours that had just been vacated. So now, we had two identical sections, and the owners were going to cut and frame a hole in the wall by the dock area, so we could use our forklift on both sides. So come Monday, I start working at the warehouse with Jonathan, the guy that was hired to take my place. As this was an on-demand shipping warehouse for manufacturing companies, we had a lot of downtime. I had been there about a month, and we were sitting in the office goofing off, talking about this and that, and I mentioned how the warehouse was kind of creepy. Jonathan replies with, yeah, especially that old guy you'll see standing at the end of the aisles as you're working. I had never met him before working together, and never mentioned seeing the old man to anyone. We started trading stories about seeing the old man, and 30 minutes later, went back to work. After we had discussed the old man, is when things started heating up. We'd be working in the warehouse and hear the bathroom doors on the opposite side of the office wall open and slam closed. You would hear footsteps, and when you went to investigate them, there would be nobody there. To try and stop the bathroom doors opening and closing, I put padlocks on them. This stopped it for a while. One day, as we were sitting in the office, I heard the bathroom doors open and slam closed so hard, they shocked the wall which was made of six layers of fireproof sheetrock. We ran to the other side of the warehouse and both doors were closed, but the locks were laying on the floor, still locked. Fast forward six months, and I get a call at midnight that one of our customers has an audit in the morning and needs to have a count of all their products in our warehouse by 8am. So I get dressed and drive to the warehouse. I get there around 1am and have to walk 200 feet in the pitch black to the back of the warehouse to turn the lights on. I start doing the inventory, and when I hear three loud knocks on the back door, I just froze and listened. Then three more loud knocks on the door. I said to myself, there ain't no way I'm answering that. Then the roll-up dock door, which is a good four or five feet off the ground, started shaking violently, like someone was trying to rip it off. I threw my clipboard on the ground and ran out the front door and jumped in my car. I was about three miles down the road when I pulled into a church parking lot and talked myself into going back to lock the doors. I drove around the back to see if maybe it was a truck driver that had showed up early, but there was nobody around the back in the dock area. I drove back around front, unlocked the door and went home. The final experience was one night as I was going to bed. My wife always went to sleep before me, as I'm a night owl. I had laid down in the bed and just started falling asleep when my wife goes, why are you standing at the foot of the bed? When I say my heart stopped beating, I'm not exaggerating. I sat up in the bed and at the foot was a shadow figure, just standing there. And as I type this, I'm getting cold chills just remembering it. I jumped out of the bed and he just disappeared. As this was during the age of the internet, I started looking up information. And the main thing I kept seeing was if it wasn't trying to cause you harm, then just try speaking to it. So the next day I went to work and I stood in the middle of the warehouse and just said out loud, I'm not sure who you are or what you want, but I acknowledge that you are here. I mean you no harm. I just work here and I'm here to do a job. You're welcome to stay here if you're friendly and I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. I did the same when I got home, except I stated that this was my home and that they were not welcome. I wanted them to leave. Since that day, I never experienced anything else and the warehouse or my home. I no longer work for my family or at the warehouse, but I still drive by there sometimes and think about the old man in the overalls. Many of you may have heard of Salisbury Hall and the White Lady. In my whole time working there, I can't say I saw the White Lady, but I did have one encounter that I don't think I'll forget. I used to be a cleaner for the small huts that people would stay overnight in, so I never went directly into the hall, only walked past it when leaving and entering the grounds, but scary still things still happened. I would hear footsteps on the gravel coming towards the hut I was in, but no one was there. I had the occasional knock on the doors and windows, and even heard faint voices and mumbles, but that became normal after a while. The scary part is when the little girl showed up. I was cleaning one day and it was chucking it down, so I kept all my stuff inside and only went out when moving between huts. I heard a very muffled knock at the door, but I didn't see anyone out the door window, so I wrote it off as just another scary noise. 
There was a mirror directly across from the door. And when I turned around to face it, that's when I spotted her. She had fairly pale skin, brunette hair tied into a ponytail with a ribbon and an oddly fancy but old looking dress. It was very common for us to host weddings there, but as far as I was aware, there wasn't one that day or the next. When I went to face the door again, she was gone. Confused, I carried on with my cleaning when about 10 minutes later, I heard a knock again. This time, she was really at the door. I was used to people asking me questions and such, but I didn't know what a child would really want. I opened the door and she asked if I could help her open the door to the hut across from me. She said her mum was at the cafe and she forgot to grab the key off her. I wasn't as hesitant as I should have been because it was only a little girl. I walked over with her and let her in. I was confused as there wasn't any luggage in the room. The beds were messy and it was freezing cold with a window left open, but no bags. I assumed she had just got here and her bags were in a car or something. Regardless, she thanked me and I went back across. I finished my cleaning and then pulled up the list I had made on my phone of what cleans I had that day. Her hut was on the list. I had never been so confused in my life. I decided to go back to the hut I had left the girl in and ask if she got the right one. The window had been closed and when I went to pull the handle down, the door was locked. I peeked through the window and saw the girl wasn't in there. I went back to the room and it was no longer cold. The heating was on and everything looked as if a family had just left, like it was a regular clean. I never saw the girl again, but I'm 100% sure she wasn't human. I don't know what I saw and spoke to that day, but it was not a little girl. It's been a few years since this all went down, but I can still vividly remember all of it. So when I was 14, it was the first thing that happened. I was lying in my bed and blinked. But the blink felt like 15 minutes have passed, even though no time did pass. But I saw during this blink that in the hallway, a kind of black smoke with bright yellow eyes, which I could feel piercing through me. I don't know how to describe it, but like it knew something like he knew me. I have absolutely no idea how to describe it, but it wasn't something you want to feel. So after that, I was a bit uncomfortable, but I ignored it. So after some time passed without anything happening, until one night I was up late and wanted to watch some Netflix on my TV. So I went to check on my brother who sleeps in the room next to mine, if he was sleeping so I didn't annoy him with it. Note that it was like two or three at night. And as soon as I walked in, I heard him snoring so loud and he was lying so comfortable, so I left him be. Next morning, I said to him that he was snoring really loud and asked how he slept. And he turned white as soon as I said that. He said he felt odd in his room, so he slept the whole night in our mom's bed with our mom. Her room is downstairs on the other side of the house. So this was the time my curiosity got the better of me. So I ordered a Ouija board. And my dumb 14 year old self thought it would be a good idea to do it alone. Luckily, nothing went wrong or didn't go as it was supposed to. But three years after that, I'm still here telling the story. And then the last experience. After this one, nothing happened. I was 15 at the time, I think, and I was up late again, two or three at night. I went downstairs to grab some snacks, and when I went upstairs, I felt this extremely uncomfortable feeling. Note, my brother's room is directly to the left of the stairs. So as I usually do, I looked at the room, and I saw the thing no one wants to see. I saw a humanoid-looking woman with a white dress and long black hair and pale skin and holes all over her body. She stood bent in the door frame with a body of two meters 30 looking at me, even though her eyes were covered by her hair. Behind her normally stood my brother's bed, but I couldn't see it. Even with an open door, I could only see like five centimeters behind her before it was black, like the blackest black you'll ever see. I fell on the ground because I for some reason felt unconscious. And after a few minutes, I woke up and the door of my brother's room was closed. I asked him the next morning if he felt different without telling him and he didn't know what I was talking about. And no, I'm not making it up. I've been looking for answers, but I can't figure it out. I'm very much a logical minded individual. 
and have always tried to apply the most reasonable explanation to any given situation. Over the years, I've experienced a number of scenarios where I've struggled to apply this reasoning, primarily with two specific locations. My parents' house which I grew up in, and a pub I used to work at. This particular story is probably the reason for my beliefs, as it happened back when I was three or four years old. It stuck with me throughout my entire life as one of my most vivid memories. It was a routine weekday morning, my brother and I eating breakfast at the kitchen table while my parents got ready for work. Suddenly, there was this faint yet high-pitched, almost tuneful whistling coming from somewhere. My mother stopped and began to attempt to track down where the noise was coming from. It was an ongoing sound, so it didn't take very long to locate the source. Within one of the kitchen cupboards, we used to have a tin full of candies for birthday celebrations. And amongst these candies was a single singing candle. You know the ones, where you light them and they whistle the tune to happy birthday. It continued to sing over and over with no signs of stopping. My mother tried running it under cold water in case it had somehow, however unlikely, got warm in the cupboard, but on it went. Eventually, she saw no other option but to pull it apart, and that was that the candle stopped. It was brushed off as, well, that was a bit odd, type moment, but no further real thought was given to it. The morning continued as routinely as it had started. It wasn't until a little later on, when we were about to get in the car, that I, as an innocent child, simply remarked, maybe it's someone's birthday. Little did I realise at the time how much this simple statement would stop mother in her tracks. As it turns out, it was in fact her father's birthday. This was the first year that she had forgotten since he passed. I don't think my mother has ever truly forgiven herself for pulling that candle apart after realising who have may have been trying to get in touch. A year or so later on his birthday, I remember we actually made a cake and put a single singing candle in the middle. We didn't light it, but the two of us sat around the same table in the kitchen the evening, lights dimmed and waited. Sadly, nothing. The experience opened my mind to a world that I don't think we can ever truly understand. Unfortunately, ever since I moved out of my parents' house a number of years ago and eventually changed jobs, the frequency of difficult to explain experiences have reduced to zero. Still, I remain as open-minded as I've always been on the subject. I was laying in bed last night, and I was having trouble falling asleep, so I was on my phone. I just had surgery, so I've been keeping my door closed so my dog doesn't come in. Around 12.06am last night, I started to hear my dog running around downstairs, and usually she's pretty quiet. She usually lays in her bed or at the top near all our rooms. While she was running around for about two minutes, maybe three, it sounded like there was something else running around with her. It sounded like my dog started digging in a pile of paper at one point. It sounded like they knocked over things over in the kitchen. After I heard the thing fall over, I got up to look and I heard this voice in my head. It wasn't my voice. It sounded almost masculine and it said, don't go. I've always been taught to listen when you hear voices like that, so I stayed in bed. After I heard this voice, about a minute later, my dog ran up the stairs and walked over to my door. It sounded like there were two of her out there. Like her breathing was distorted. She stood outside my door, whimpered, then walked away. Should I be worried? And does anyone have any idea about what was outside my door running around with my dog? Or what the voice was? Also, throughout the day today, my dogs have been acting really strange. Distant almost. She also seems really tired, but she hasn't laid down and slept yet. I've never really experienced anything I can definitively say was 100% a ghost encounter. But recently a lot of things have been happening, ever since I moved, that just seem really odd. I lived in Michigan for about 8 months, and recently moved back down to Alabama, due to some personal reasons. Everything seemed pretty chill for the most part, but I started seeing things out of the corner of my eyes. I didn't think anything of it at first. After all, it was a new house. Things aren't where they used to be, and I'm not used to the house yet. It only makes sense that I would see something in the corner of my eye, only for it to just be a dresser or something. But then it started getting really weird. 
The first time it happened that was actually unexplainable was a few weeks ago. I had just made something to eat and was about to head back into my room. I walked past the recliner in the living room and I noticed out of the corner of my eye something very clearly turning its head and looking up at me. Obviously, I thought this was my cat, so I stopped to pet it, only for there not to be anything there. I just tried to ignore it and go into my room. The second time was also in the kitchen while I was getting food. I had just turned off the stove and I saw something very clearly in the corner of my eye. This, I think, maybe could be explained by my eye just being weird for a second. But after constantly seeing things almost daily, I felt it was something to add. The third time happened last night. I had just gotten in bed ready to sleep. I set my alarm, took my glasses off, and then I felt something press down on the foot of my blankets, almost like the cat had jumped on the end of my bed. Usually, I keep my door closed and she can't get in there. Again, I didn't think about it much. I thought maybe the blanket was just settling. Maybe since I have a fan in the wind, Cannon rustled it, whatever. Well, then I hear a noise on my computer desk and I have to look over and I clearly see some kind of something, a face, an animal. I don't know what it was. I shone my flashlight over it, but nothing was there. My bedroom door was closed and there was no way for anything to get in or out of my room. So I have no idea what it was. I eventually just tried to forget about it and go to sleep, but it's still on my mind, especially after everything else I've been seeing since moving back down here.